Hi, I'm David and welcome to Leisure Bit. And today I've got a quick update for you on camper control and specifically the control panel module, uh, which is basically the screen essentially that we use to control camper control. So let's take a look at that. Um, let's just go through a little bit of background just for anybody that hasn't watched before and just a bit of a refresher if you have. So Camper Control came about, it was a, a concept I came up with as I decided I wanted slightly more functionality from my camper van control system and to add additional features. And whilst the control system that comes with the Eldest Camper Van is absolutely perfect for most people, I'm not most people, and wanted to, to add different capabilities uh, to that. So I started thinking about that and camper control was the concept that came out of that. And the principle of it is, is you have a control panel, which is what we're gonna talk about today, um, or you can control it from your uh, phone or your tablet or your computer even um, remotely, which is a feature I'll add on later down the line. What we're trying to do here is make it easier and simpler to kind of set up scenes and control the van and add additional capabilities over and above what comes uh, supplied with it. And what I'm really keen to do is make sure that the things that are included are things that really make a difference and add value rather than being gimmicky. And I'll, I'll just give you an example of one. Um, last time I think I touched on the entertainment module which basically um, switches things on such as the TV, the radio, the sound bar, the Wi-Fi TV and other features and functionality um, to do with entertainment, including the aerial. And what I've actually done is, the reason, why, well, why would you want to switch the aerial off? And it's very simple. What I'm really keen to do is use the smallest amount of power possible when using camper control so things such as normally the aerial amplifier would be running that uh, ready for when you want to put the tv or even the radio on but what i want to actually do is when i'm not using those things is just switch it off because it'll save a little bit of power and that little bit of power could make the difference between running out of battery and having enough battery uh, if you're away wild camping or not hooked up so that's the kind of thinking behind the finite amount of control in there. There's also some things such as mood lighting, which you'll see when we look at the demonstration. And my plan is to extend that out further so I can have like bottom lighting and top lighting over and above what comes with the van, just to give it a little bit more ambience. I'll add to those things as we go forward. So what you actually see in the little demo isn't the finished job it kind of shows you how it's progressing but it actually gives me enough capability so i can test the camper control modules as i finish prototyping them and uh, getting them ready uh, the one if you haven't seen the previous video um, one worth looking at is the one about the fresh and waste dump valves or the under under van mod module as i called it um, that um, shows you how, how that works and one of the key things uh, just recently I've thought about is in order for the modules to work with the master module, which the display connects up to, it needs to be able to communicate so it can ask a module to do something or get some information back from a module. So, for example, if we want to open the fresh water drain or the waste drain or both, um, the master control module needs to be able to ask the waste control module or the under van module to actually open the valve to drain the water. And to do that, it needs to be able to communicate. And in the original design, which you probably see in the previous video, you'll see some black cable, which was actually um, shielded CAT5 or CAT6, can't remember which one it is, doesn't really matter, um, which was used to transfer the power, but also to do the communication. Now, I got thinking it's quite fiddly to route wires through vans, isn't it? Uh, unless you're out from the offset and actually building your van from scratch, in which case it's not too much effort to actually route additional wiring. 
Um, so I thought wireless controls probably the right thing to do in the right way forward. So um, I'm just updating the design and then moving that into the prototypes on the modules to actually just check and make sure that's feasible and works reliably. So that's the kind of next update, but that massively simplifies connectivity between modules. So you now only need to then provide the power and onward connectivity to whatever the module connects to. I've also been working on the inverter um, design and how that's going to work. And I'll share that in a future video because I'm quite pleased with the where I've got to in terms of how that will work. And again, to minimise the amount of disruption needed when installing it. But secondly, to make sure it's safe as well. It's really important when you're dealing with electricity or gas or anything else indeed even the 12 volts is just to be very careful um because you, you what last thing you want to do is set your van on fire or electrocute yourself or somebody else uh worse still so um just really keen to make sure everything's safe reliable and adds value um and when, what i mean by value isn't so much cash value on the uh on on the vehicle it's about making sure it makes your leisure life easier and isn't just a gimmick. So those are the things I'll be testing through over the coming months. And then hopefully at some point it gets to a really useful piece of kit, which is extensible and you can add to later on or get everything at once. So that's the background to camper control. So should we take a look at the control panel now? Let's have a quick look. Just for reference, the audio and video quality on the demonstration isn't brilliant. Uh, I filmed it on, on the uh, phone and it, it kind of brought up the best image, but it's still not a perfect image by any means. So just apologies for that, but it should give you the gist anyway. So let's take a look. So let's start by booting up Camper Control. There we go. And now what we'll do is we'll turn the lights on, the awning light on, the pump on, the gas on and the inverter on. We can also then go into mood settings and we can alter the brightness of the interior light uh, to our preference. And we can go into the entertainment section and we can turn the TV on, the radio on, the sound bar on the Wi-Fi TV on and the aerial on. We can also turn everything off or everything on and we've got a sync facility so it turns for example the aerial on when you've got the radio on. We can then go into the drain settings so let's have a look at the drainage and we can open the fresh and open the waste valve and we can see here how much fresh water and how much waste we have in the tanks. We can also get the status of the van. So we can check how much fresh water, how much waste water again, how much gas and LPG we have, leisure battery voltage, vehicle battery voltage and health. And we can also get then environmental information such as the indoor temperature, the indoor humidity, the indoor carbon dioxide, which is useful for checking air quality within the van, the outdoor temperature and the outdoor humidity. We can also get some more options such as changing the screen brightness and we can change the sound as well if we require if we want a different sound level or disable the sound and we can also set the date and time as required. So that's the camp control module and you'll notice the icons along the top there and what the icons do is they give us information on what's switched on and things like that. At the moment it's just in demo mode so it's not actually connected to any modules so it's just uh, some examples there and if there's a problem with something such as if the batteries run low will notify on those rather than having to show it all of the time and then you, you only get information when you need it. After 30 seconds on the home screen, it drops back to the 
standby screen or the idle screen which then brings up information in terms of what time it is and what date it is so that's quite handy as a clock for the van it'll also be adding the capability for an alarm clock as well so that's the camp control screen I hope you found that demonstration useful. It gives you the gist, I think, of the, of the sort of things you'd be able to do with it. One key feature that wasn't shown on there is the switching of modes, uh, which is something I'm going to add to it. And also you'll notice the absence of the heating control. So just briefly cover modes first of all. Modes allows you to set up, for, for instance, a daytime mode or a morning and an afternoon and an evening mode so that you can set all of the settings as you require, so lighting levels, what's switched on, what's switched off, and all of those good things to make sure. Um, it just saves faffing on doing all the different um, switches each time you want to do something. It, it's essentially like a memory based on a, on a scene, you might call it, in a lighting software, um, so you can actually just select one mode and not have to worry about selecting all of the different options um, to do that and that's something that will be able to be configured up so you can put in each of the different modes how you want it to work. So the second point um, there was around the absence of uh, kind of the heating and hot water controls. That's something I'll be adding later along with the remote access module which allows you to control it from your phone, tablet or computer. So they're kind of future things coming um, later on. The reason for the heating and water control is I've just got some work to do to kind of figure out the best way of doing that. And I need the van really to, to look into that one. So um, starting off with the things that um, I know about and what, what needs to connect up and some of the new features as you've seen, such as the um, drain module. Um, or under van module as I called it with the freshened uh, waste drain and uh, also making sure when I'm doing the modules just adding a control button on each of them just in case there's ever ever an issue so there's a little bit just of background in terms of camper control and I hope you found this uh, vlog useful um, really appreciate your comments or if you think I've missed anything or should be doing something differently or um, the obvious. There, w there was one piece of feedback from previous which was it'd be really useful to have a camera under the van to make sure you hit the waste water disposal point. That's something I'll come back to because I've got a little control panel for the main cab area but that again just needs a little bit of thinking through and trying to make sure that any uh, muck that gets under the van doesn't end up uh, just covering the camera lens rend rendering it uh, not particularly useful in that scenario but uh, it's a fantastic idea that one because uh, um, definitely want to make sure the water goes into the drain and uh, the best place to have it is uh, when you're positioning the van up so thanks for watching I hope you found that useful and again really appreciate any comments you can drop them in the comments below or you can email us at feedback at leisurebit.co.uk catch you next time you take care bye